All right, guys, we are here for the week one recap for BB Can 11. And I'm super, super, super excited for this week. We have the legend herself. We got Tiff in the house. And uh, Tiff and I met at the BB Can 10 finale. And I immediately was just drawn to her. She's got that like sway. She's got that vibe. She's got that magnetism. <laughs> and uh, it's stuff like that that really makes you a good Big Brother player. People want to be around you. People want to talk to you. And she has it. She has that X factor. And uh, yeah, we've, we've been friends ever since. And I love you. I love you. Got a lot of love for you. Uh, Tiff, tell us about yourself. What's going on, fam? Oh my God, what's up, Bruno? Thank you for inviting me, for having me here. Of course, we definitely hit it off first time we met. I was like, this is like, I found my tribe. <laughs> I actually, when we came to Toronto and met you guys, it was so amazing. And you and I, we did, we really vibed out in the club. We were like, this is a, I don't know if this is our thing. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just, I'm um, enjoying life. I'm doing a podcast as well. Um, just embracing getting older but staying fit and um mentally emotionally all of that stuff but this is like the first time i will be watching bb can live so this is really dope for me that's awesome yeah and uh and uh, that you're right we did vibe and it was awesome and uh yeah first first time watching bb can uh what are your thoughts so far we're two episodes in i know we're kind of early it's still the first week mm -hmm. is there anybody did you watch the bios beforehand I did. I watched the bios beforehand. Now, I'll tell you, in my bios, I even have like some little notes. My bios, I was definitely going for um, Amal. Mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately, I do know that she left the game. Um, I thought I, I was actually looking at, um, it's his name. Um, I'm going to mess it up. Not Is it Daniel? Ricardo. What? Okay. So, okay. Let me go to my notes just so I can make <laughs> sure I get... I get it situated because I took some really good notes. Because that's what I was going to say was like, is there anybody from the pregame that you were like, you were like, this the, is my. Okay, so from yeah. pregame, it was definitely Dan for me. It was Dan, not Daniel. It Dan was Dan. Sabo. Dan was really giving confident. He's giving like, I put myself in uncomfortable situations. Like I didn't, I expected him to like do really well under pressure. Um, Jonathan, I really thought, I really think like that he's going to do well. I was looking at him as being, um, the mature, the father, the experience, the there for his family, really like I'm here for the money, not for a showman's, not for the fame. I'm here to get the money. Um, I was looking at Santina. I thought that maybe, uh, she might be a little cutthroat and she's been on her own for, a, for a while. She said she's been on her own since she was 15. I'm like, she might just take things a little seriously. I did. I, I rated Zach like really low. I'm like, he was so giving politician. I'm like, I don't know. He's just, I think he's going to go in and, and give politician, but he, he cracked me up though in the, in his episodes. And I guess we'll get to that. Um, Vanessa is really giving me Tiffany vibes. She's giving me like, um, mom, but you know, still owning her own individuality. Like I'm a mom, but I did not like change who I am as a person. I'm still going to be me. I'm still going to live. I'm still going to have fun. I'm still young, still vibrant, still got a lot to give. So I want to see what she has to do. And then I, I was also looking at Koozie. So yeah, those were my, those were my tops. We're very similar, minus the Vanessa part. We're very, very similar. I liked, um, that's what I said about Dan. I think he's going to be that guy that's going to be important to the show uh, because he's that guy. I don't think people are going to target him, but at the same time, it's like mm -hmm. he's going to be involved. Uh, I loved Koozie. I was all for Koozie. Uh, Jonathan as well. Loved exactly what you said about Jonathan. He's just got that that thing to him. You know, he's the, he's like the father, the family man. People are going to trust him kind of thing. I liked Santina. Even though she didn't give much in that bio, I was like, I'm liking right. Santina. Like, there's just there's something yes. about her that's like, I, I like Thanks. her. And with Zach, Zach, very similar too. It's like, this guy can go either way for me. He's either going to be all in this way or all out that way. And uh, that's how I felt with Zach. And I'm going to tell you, speaking of Zach, I do want to talk about him. I'm, I'm loving him. Man. This is a Zach show. This is the Zach show. Oh. I can't believe that I am loving him too. He cracked me up. He said, this is a business to me. He said, I will cuddle with a guy. I will cuddle with a girl. <laughs> that man is there to play the game. He said, whatever it is I have to do, I'm here to do it. So I said, "That's you have to. You got to be willing. We don't go in that house for nothing. You know it's right. not. Otherwise, you can just stay at home if you want to be comfortable. You have to be willing to be uncomfortable. You are there for the game to win.
Yeah, I agree. And, and, and to me, it is the Zach show. He's kind of, you know, and, and pre-game, I, I, we were kind of, I think it was pretty obvious, but I was calling it that he's going to bring the boys together. He's going to bring them in. He's going to group them up and he's going to try to, you know, use them as a force. I like their, their strategy. It, it has been used before where it's like, all right, this is our group. We're going to bring people in. We're going to kind of control the votes. I like that he's doing that. He's a really, really good talker. And there's one thing I want to talk about. I think it happened in the first episode. I don't know if it was the first or the second episode. When John Michael comes up to him, now we got, I want to talk about John Michael a little bit. Uh, John Michael comes up to him and says, "Hey, listen," and and he's not even the HOH yet. He's he is a potential HOH. He's one of the two. He's a 50 yeah. 50 chance. And he tells yeah. Zach, "Hey, if I win, I'm going after the boys." Well, guess what happens? He doesn't win. He's like, "Okay, listen, I'm sorry." Well, yeah, of course you're going to say that now. It's a little too late. The damage is done. And uh, I want to know your thoughts on that. Why 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 would he say that? Especially when he's not even HOH yet, um, and he knows Santina wants it. What's what's the point of saying that? I'm going to tell you, here are my notes on John Michael. Even before the episode aired, I said he's cute and cuddly. I think uh, he has fa- fa- family who are fans of the show. Talks a lot of shit. So he needs to STF you. <laughs> That's exactly what I have in my, in my bio for him. That if he STF you, he might be okay. And we all know what that means. He said that about himself. He says, I talk a lot. So if I can just shut up, then I'll be fine. So why? Why do you go in and you tell the guys that if I win, I'm going for the guys and then has no remorse about it until after he loses. Even after he says that, he goes like, yeah, I don't care. I'm not afraid to let them know I'm coming for them. I'm not going to hold anything back. Yes, baby, play your cards close to your chest. Why are you showing everything like you don't tell a person everything you got you have no power yet and now you're powerless yep not only did he understand that bad strategy not only did he not have power yet he didn't have it at all and uh and you know like what are you doing like keep your mouth shut you know keep your ears open your mouth shut and uh, I couldn't believe that. And this is a guy that's saying he's a super fan. And like you said, his family was the fans. And, and I was a little rough on him on his bio as well because it's like this guy is like, oh, I know what weeks you got to throw things. How do, you, how do you do that? Like you don't know the situation. The, the game just changes minute by minute. Like you can't be like week four, I'm going to throw the veto. Well, first of all, you got to get there. Second of all, who's on the block? Is it you? Is it your friends? Are, are you in power? Are you at the bottom? Like there's, it's so situational. So just the way he was talking in his bios, I gave him a little bit of a, of a run. I was like, listen, man, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. You know, he claims he's this, he's that, but the guy's clearly lost. And it, and it showed, you know, we're one or two episodes in and it showed this guy does not know what he's doing in there, which is unfortunate because I think people had high hopes for, hopes for him, but it is what it is. Um, so you're saying this is your first time watching uh, BB can, Thoughts on the house, thoughts Why? on the cast, thoughts on, yo, I'm so, telling you. Yeah, your house is dope. Like, I actually want to go in and see it. The, You know, I want to go in and feel it. It always confuses me. It always seems like it's so many mirrors. It, it looks like it's made of glass. Like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> It's, I don't know how you guys can remember your way around the house. It seems very confusing to me. So this one is built different. So they've had a similar structure for many, many years. This is the first time they've kind of changed things around a little bit more. But it's a very small house. It looks a lot bigger on TV than it is. It's just the kitchen, really? the family room is very, very small, very tiny. Um, I don't know if it's the angles or what it is. And then usually it's just the upstairs. And then there was the, the railing going. It used to only be like a U-shape. And it was the HOH okay. room on one side, the two bedrooms. Now it goes all the way around. There's like a walking track, which yeah. is kind of cool. And they've definitely added a few rooms in there and stuff. But yeah, it's a lot smaller than it looks. But it's definitely this year, like I agree with you, it's more confusing because there's just so many additional rooms. And and I want to bring that up because normally in BB Can, like w- week one, the house was so small, there was nowhere to go to talk. It's like it didn't matter mm-hmm. where you were. You were either in the kitchen, the family room, a bedroom, or the HOH room. That was it. You had four options. And there's 16 people in the house. So there was nowhere mm-hmm. to be alone to talk. But what I'm noticing in, in week one here is there's so many rooms that there's two people in this room. There's three people in that room. There's four people in that room. Like everyone's kind of spread out, which is it's very different to see but i think what it does is it opens up game strategy sessions because people say. have that space to talk because originally they don't so for a first week um what do you think so far of the first week do you think this is kind of like uh messy do you think they're kind of on uh doing okay game wise like what, what are your thoughts on week one so far 
I, I definitely am concerned when people call themselves super fans and I consider myself to have been a super fan, but not like a non-strategic super fan. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do think that what you said, them having these places to go and have conversations will allow them to be able to go and game more. So I think we're probably going to see more gaming in this season, especially early on, because they're they're finding ways to hide and congregate. I think the guys might end up running this unless, you know, Claudia is getting, she's like, Hey, I think the guys are trying to do something. I'm concerned that the guys are trying to do something. Those are some very strong guys. The guys teamed up and guys team up all the time. I would like to see the women team up, but it just so happens that anytime women try to team up in BB, the guys get wind of it and they act like they are so offended, like it's the worst thing that can happen, but they automatically do it and no, they don't think anything about it. So I agree a um, hundred. Yep. I agree a hundred. Now I wish I, I, it would be nice. Sorry. I didn't want to interrupt, interrupt you. It would be nice to see it, but yeah, you're right. Like Claudia is out here saying the guys Alliance is out there. I always feel like the problem is there's always that showmance. The showmances are always the problem because they, they want the all, the all women Alliance, which would be great, but there's always the showmances that get involved. So it's like, there's the emotional side that gets in the way. It's like, yes, we mm -hmm. want to have an all woman Alliance, but I also kind of like this guy or this girl or whatever it is. And that's where the cracks start happening because it's like, you have to make a choice. Do you go with your mm -hmm. heart or do you go with your head? And and it's always a problem when you're playing a game like this. Where Cause who's are that that's already, I'm sorry. Um, oh, no, you're good. Somebody's already got their eye on Kuzi. Uh, one of Ty? the in the th yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. I think Ty he Ty is very interesting to me. I think he has a lot of potential. If you watch his bio, okay, he was saying how mm -hmm. how you know it's he's like, man, I have my kryptonite. My weakness is is women. Mm -hmm. It's like you know he did. Yeah, and and uh, I think the guy has all the tools to do well. It's, as long as he can keep his head in the game. That's that's what it has to be. His head has to be in the game. And uh, I think he could do well. I think he's going to be the squeaky wheel. You know, the guys want to bring him in, but he's playing. You know, he's got a, he's got that heart. And he seems like a really good guy. So he's going to be that squeaky wheel where I think he's going to be the one to kind of you know break things up, which uh, wouldn't be bad. So I know we were talking about Claudia a little bit, and uh, and she's saying she wants to form the alliance, but uh, she's vocal about it. Now here's the thing: I think in situations like now, this is me personally, and I, I want to hear your thought on this as well. Is like everyone sees that the guys are working together. Right. It, I think it's very obvious. Everybody sees it. If you're in that house, mm -hmm. if you don't see it, you're not playing. Like you're not paying mm -hmm. attention. It's very, very obvious. The guys are That's all buddying a rough up. Show. Yeah, hundred percent. A hundred percent. So if you're not seeing it, you're not paying attention, you're not playing. I think everybody should know what's going on. But the problem is I think Claudia is kind of spearheading this. Like, do you guys notice this? Do you guys notice this? Usually yeah. when that happens to me, it's like, listen. If if that if someone needs to take the fall, she's gonna end up taking the fall because everyone oh, yeah. can just say, "Hey, listen, Claudia. Yo, Claudia brought up there's this guys alliance going on. What do you think?" And her name is gonna oh, be attached okay. to it. So when someone needs to take that fall, it's gonna be her. So yes, she's on the right track. She's on the right path. But I think she's putting too much attention on herself when everybody, I'm sure, sees it. So that's a hard thing. Is you want to bring attention to it. But I, you don't want to bring too much attention to yourself doing it. So I think she's doing a little bit too much. But I don't know if you know. You about the voting, right? You know about the safety voting? No. So tell me what's okay. going on with that. Do you, okay. So every week Canada gets, I, think, I don't know if it's just Canada or everybody. It might just be Canada. I'm not sure. It gets to vote to save somebody to be evicted. No, that's just Canada. Okay. So can, okay. So Canada gets to vote to save someone every single week, uh, but okay. you can only save them one time. So you, so oh. say we save, let's just say we save, um, I don't know, Zach week one. We cannot okay. save him ever. Even if he wasn't on the block, okay. it's used up. It's like a one-time mm -hmm. veto from Canada. So, right. do you want to know who won week ones? Oh, tell me. Claudia. Claudia won. Oh, good. Yeah. So, so, so Canada likes her. So, East Coast, I'm I telling rate, you. I rated, I rated Claudia a five. Like, I gave her, like, going far. I, I really did see her as that girl next door. Um, get along with everybody. Great mm -hmm. social game. So I, I wasn't the only one. Okay. Yeah, and and the East Coast loves loves Big Brother. Loves their East Coast. They stay together strong. So uh, they're gonna vote for their East Coast. And and Claudia is the first one. I think John might get the next one if he's in danger. But uh, yeah, she got the first one. So um, yeah. So I want to talk. So we talked about Zach a little bit. Uh, oh, we talked. Wait, I'm sorry. I got a question. Yeah. Didn't Claudia come in last? No, that's uh, uh, Renee. 
Oh, okay, okay, okay. Renee, the, the law student, okay. uh, she came in last. Okay. Claudia, yeah, she was okay. kind of in the middle of the pack, I guess. So I didn't rate the law student really high when I saw her bio. It just was not giving. I wasn't expecting much, so I'm kind of not surprised. Yeah, I think I think we have a, a very similar like everybody you've mentioned so far and what you've said about them were pretty much on the same path. Like we okay. we kind of see it the same, and and I agree with you 100. percent Like uh, I agree with you 100. percent Speaking of the of the comp and stuff, what did you think of the HOH comp? What did you think of that? That was a uh, I liked the HOH comp. I liked how they incorporated the puzzle. I was confused about the net. I was yeah. like, uh, what's going on here? And I love the putting the wall together, like for the ball to make it into the crown. That seems really hard, mm -hmm. but it's like, it's self-fulfilling. It's a self-gratification when you actually get it because like, how many times do they have to do that before they get it? You know, I really liked it. I, kudos to the people who got it like right off. And that that's one thing I noticed too. And it's no disrespect to the American house, but I feel like our house and our comps are just top tier. It's so different. It's just, they put, I don't, I don't disagree. Yeah, I don't they, disagree at they all. They put the effort into it and, and you can tell it shows even our production value. You watch the first episode, the, the, when Arissa comes on and they do that kind of like cut scene, you know, it's like a little movie. Like that stuff is yeah. sick, man. I love that stuff. And and like we our budget is a lot lower than the American one, but I feel like we put the money in the different places and I mean your prizes are way better than ours. So maybe that's where it goes. I mean, it's better for you guys, you know what I mean? But uh We're yeah. not complaining. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, exactly. But uh, yeah, the, the the competitions are just they always hit it out of the park and and uh you know, I absolutely I love seeing it. Now, you mentioned you liked them all uh in your preseason. It's always unfortunate and it's sad when this happens. We we don't know what happened. At least I don't know what happened. Um, yeah. but it was very abrupt. It seemed very, very abrupt how, um, you know, when Aaron Brock, so that's the lady that came over the, the intercom. Mm -hmm. Anytime you hear her say house guests come to the living room, I've been in there twice. I've been in the house twice. Anytime you hear her voice, it's never good news. She's never comes and okay. says, Hey, she never says, come over here. Good job guys. That never, ever, ever happened. So when you hear mm -hmm. Aaron Brock say everyone to the living room, you know, it's bad news right away. Uh, but it was so, uh, it was just, I mean, to us, it was abrupt. I mean, who knows in the house if, if, you know, things are different. Well, one thing I noticed is um, when she made the announcement, the house guest didn't seem surprised. Right. It almost seemed as if it was expected to them. Like maybe they knew she was having a tough time. Um, I'm not sure what happened at all. And I, I don't even feel at liberty to speak right. on such a personal matter, just in observing what, um, how it was presented. I was in as watching the show and maybe how it was edited. I kept looking for her just because I watched the show after I heard about her leaving. Okay. So I was kind of looking for these context clues as to what could have caused this uh, her to leave. And so they weren't showing a lot of her. And I also didn't see the personality that I was looking for when from her bio, I was expecting her to come in as this force with this great energy. And I wasn't seeing a lot of her and I wasn't seeing a lot of that and you know we know that we can be fans of the show and want to go on and think that um it just it's it's an easy game or or we'll be able to handle it but a lot of people do not realize that there it is a very highly intense pressurized cooker and it brings out so much of your anxiety your fears your, it, it brings so you you have so many feelings inside of you that you're able to out here manage and suppress and uh, divert from but in that environment in a house with 15 other strangers you're the 16th stranger um, things really get to you and not to mention if you do have something on the outside going on that you need that requires you to focus or is pulling you away from being able to totally commit to the game. I understand that everybody cannot be there in their situations and circumstances that cause you to say, maybe this isn't the right time for me to be here. Yeah, I 1000% agree with that. I've, I've brought this up many times myself where it's like on the outside world, when you're watching, everything looks so easy. You have the answers in front of you. You're watching everyone's playbook. You're seeing their DRs. You know who's actually being loyal to who. You know what's going on. And when you go in that house, it is a very, very different situation. Now you're you're face to face with everybody, you know, 
if you're at home and you're doing it online, it's it's very easy. You're not dealing with people's emotions, people face to face, you know, the the energy in the room, the you know, there's people that are, you know, smarter than you in there, maybe people that are stronger than you there. Whatever way you look at it, you're not the player you think you are going into that house. When you're at home, you think you're going to be the best and oh, I'm just going to go in the house and I'm going to work with this person, this person, this person, this person and they all want to work with you, right? Magically in your own imagination. But when you go in the house, things are different. Someone might not like you, might not trust you. Whatever it is, the reality kicks in. Uh, again, I don't know what happened to her. I have no idea. Um, it's sad, you know. The reality, you start thinking this too, Bruno. You start thinking like, oh, I'm stuck here. And mm. I'm not stuck here overnight or for the weekend. Yeah. I can possibly be stuck here for days and days and days. You mean there are no windows? Right. <laughs> you mean this house isn't as big as I thought it was? You mean, oh, there's so many things that you don't know. And then you become sleep deprived in the first week because there's so much excitement. So you people should give us a little more grace when we're in there as house guests. And when we come out that we're not just people in a, on a TV screen playing a game. Um, there's a lot more that goes into our mental health 100. that involves us to become like either more anxious or more closed off or more reserved or more paranoid. And then we have to come out to the real world where people are so overly critical of us, you know, and on, on our seasons, like people are get people get canceled for not washing their hands after using the bathroom or, you know, because it's, you're just so watching. You just don't know. So when you get in there and you start to realize everything somebody can see of you, things that you don't think about when you're at home, like, oh, I scratch my underarm all the time. <laughs> like something. So. Yeah, it's true. It's very well said. Very, very, very well said. And it is like, and like you say, it is a pressure. And you just do things like that. Sometimes I'll sit. Yeah, exactly. You just scratch your arm or you're picking your nose yeah, or whatever you it is. No, you know. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? You're picking your ears. and who, who knows, you know? Then you realize you're on TV and you're like, oh, my God, do they see me doing <laughs> this? And then you get so paranoid, like, I don't know if I want to be here. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> it's see, wild. I'm not saying that's the case with her, but I'm just right. speaking in general about house guests going in and the pressure that it is on us from being in there and how it may look to people on the outside. And not to mention, like, I'm a mom and my I left my son and I... I was thinking about him all the time. Yep. I, I I was praying and hoping and, and believing that he was okay. But if I would have let the pressure of, is he okay? Really? Like, did he fall? Did he hurt himself? Did something yep. happen? Do they need me? Is, is he, is he going to be upset with me that I'm gone for so long? Yep. You know, like you could, those things could really get to you. So unfortunately you have to act like nothing on the outside world exists. I told my family, and this might be crazy. I said, Hey, I don't even care if somebody dies. Don't call me. There's nothing I can do about somebody dying. Yeah. D I'm here. So on our, on ours, I don't know if it's the same for you guys. They actually give us a thing. And it's like, if it, what, what do you want to happen? Like what has to happen for us to tell you about it? So like if someone Ooh. dies, this thing happens. So if you don't put that on that list, they will not let yeah. you know. So that's so I'm that person. Yeah. So it's like a hundred percent. So it's like, if I was you want to know, I was there for the win. Yeah, a hundred percent. So you got to be there for, and you literally said word for word, what I say, like word for, it's like, I always say that you don't know if they're okay. Something happened. Are they hurt? Like it, it, it can play with your mind. And the problem in there, it's a snowball effect because there's nobody to tell you everything's okay. So it's like, right. nobody's giving you that reassurance. So it's like, if something happened, then you start, you know, you can almost get in your own mind. And I actually want to bring that up. That brings me to hope. Um, have you mm -hmm. been watching the dailies? I have not been watching the daily. Okay. So, so Bruno, listen, yes. I messaged you. I DM'd you like, Bruno, help me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you did. I'm, I'm, I'm suffering over here. And I don't know why I had this infatuation. Like I was so obsessed with, I've got to watch this season. Yeah. So I, I watched one daily with you. I watched on right. your, on your show, on your kick. And, um, but I haven't been up to date. So please. Please. Okay, so uh, I want to tell you this. So Hope is actually having. A, that's why I want to talk about this stuff, like the the snowball effect. Hope's having a really hard time, uh, a really really tough time in there. He was on on day five. He was already cracking, and he's like, I can't be here in this. And it was Roberto and um, uh, Roberto and uh, I want to say Ty. Was it Ty? I think it was Ty. I don't. Yeah, it was Roberto and Ty. We're sitting him down in that in that pool table room, saying, Hey, man, listen, like you know, we kind of need you. Like, come on, man, you know. And he's going, I don't know. And you could tell he's already cracking. 
you've been in the house for a while. I've been yeah. in the house for a while. You know, week one is is probably I would say the easiest week. Everyone's still on the high. Yeah. Everyone's like you know yeah. excited to be there. Everyone's trying to don't get to know send each me other. home. That's yeah. The, well, I'm not going home. Right. One. <laughs> right. Like just I, you don't want to go home. That's the biggest thing. Like week one. Like I don't want to be that person. Right. And but everyone's kind of on that high. They're getting in the house and everyone's excited to be there. And you know when you get to like week three, week four week five, you know, obviously the emotions are starting to weigh on you and it's not as exciting anymore. Like those like, you know, superficial conversations aren't happening as much. And it's like, there's more stress and you know, there's less and less people, which makes you bigger and bigger target. Like there's so much more going on. This is week one, day five. And he's already at that like cracking moment. He's not even in danger. Mm. The guy's safe and he's having these moments. So it's, I, I think he's going to have a really, really, really hard time. And, and when I see stuff like that, uh -huh. I feel like the boys or whoever he's working with, I think it's the boys. Yeah. You know, when they see that, it, he almost becomes like a, a liability where it's like, we got to get rid of him before he blows our games up. You know what I mean? So it's like, yes. so a player like that, it's like, listen, man, he's cracking. He's, he's cracking under pressure. Like we might have to let him go just to keep us safe, like to preserve our games, you know? So it's tough to hear, but yeah, like you I... say, like the mental stuff is tough in there and yeah, let's hear some thoughts on it. That's crazy because my notes for hope says, um, kind of fun, silly, a coach, a giver, a leader could get targeted early yeah yeah for sure i don't i and I, I just that's what i put in there i just felt like he could get targeted but i was feeling like maybe um he might go in a little stronger his personality and Big then personality. this guy's his body he's really built i was yeah. like um you're on the wrong show that means you <laughs> on the challenge <laughs> yeah for real but um that is that is unfortunate. I, and I did see him. Didn't he come in the house and immediately team up with like Roberto? Immediately. And too obviously too. Like they went, they ran off in rooms together and they're like cheering, like, which is good that they grouped up like that. But especially in a house like this one, there's a lot of bros. And I feel yeah. like it was just, it put that like magnifying glass on that spotlight mm -hmm. on them. Like, look over there, guys, look at these two guys they are already boys. Like we don't even know each other yet. Like everyone's like, what's your name? What's your, and they're like already like buddying up, you know? Yeah. So yeah. I think it put a little bit of a spotlight on them as well by doing that. If he's having a tough time, I can definitely see what you're saying um, about his group feeling that one Nobody wants that kind of nervous, anxious energy. Everybody yep. kind of needs their mind to stay in a specific place. Like, I am, like, such a positive person. So if I'm having a moment, like, please don't come be negative with me. Like, please, um, please be positive. Be the positivity in my life. So they are probably already trying to think of, like, we need our minds to stay here. And if he's not being able to fair, find a way through it, I can see what you're saying about them going, we might have to let him go ahead and go home. Yeah, I, that's what I'm saying. Like, they, they haven't said it out loud yet or anything like that. Yeah. But you know how that works. It's like, <clears throat> yeah. Me, so it's like, okay, this guy, again, he becomes a liability. And, and you're right. It almost, yeah. it, it can it can change your mindset on things and kind of, right. you know, ruin your, Don't your make focus. Me feel I don't want to feel like that. Right. Right. So it's like, it's, it's almost better to say, sorry, buddy, you got to go and let's just move forward without him. So, uh, what about, uh, Santina? What are our thoughts on Santina and her HOH? I think she's uh person. I think she's been holding her stuff good or conversations. She's holding things close to the chest. What are your thoughts on Santina? Santina is holding her cards very close to her chest. I find that very smart move. Yeah. Um, I do not think that you should just let everyone know what you're thinking. Um, I saw Koozie was trying to get some information yes. from her. She was not giving it up. I uh, think that she is probably be going to become like a leader in the house. She They already were considering her as HOH even before she won the HOH, but she won the part one before right. she won the part two. Uh, she plays a very strategic game. She's uh, she's the one who's like been on her own since she was 15, yeah. right? Kind of like yeah. living. Yeah, this woman has been through things that have allowed her to have to deal with real life in tough situations on her own. And this is probably no different playing this game with people is probably no different for her than a lot of her real life situations. A lot of us play big brother in our daily lives. So coming into a game and playing the social aspect or, or, or people aspect of it, we kind of can function in fair weather there, but it's just like the camp, the competitions might stump us, but she seems to be doing very well in the competitions. So as long as, um, if I think if she can get people to look at her like I want to be with Santina versus Santina has to go, 
Hmm. then she'll 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 do well yeah so i can actually relate with santina that's why i think i liked her so much from the start she's she's she doesn't give the information out like even in her bios they're very short answers she didn't give anything and i actually liked that a lot and that's what i was saying in the bios like i actually like her there's something about her i was on my own at 15 i can relate to that you have to hustle to survive you it just it's a thing you get this like different people skill because you got to be able to talk to people you got to be able to get in there and uh, and she has i like that so i like how she's not showing her cards she's very like she's got that but not not a wall up in a negative way like a wall up like i'm not mm -hmm. giving you anything but you still want to give her information when her and mm -hmm. koozie were sitting together koozie was just spilling it all and and santina's just like thank you very much santina didn't even ask anything and so, and koozie sits down and says all right i'm gonna tell you some stuff jm saying this and boom 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 and santina's just sitting there taking it in that's that's a skill to almost be able to sit there and have people want to tell you stuff yes she's in power but it's it felt a little different um for sure and I do want to talk about Kuzi a little bit too, because she was my pregame favorite. Kuzi was my, I was like, Kuzi's my girl. Uh, this is my my pick. I love her. This is, I just loved everything about Kuzi. I loved her personality. Mm -hmm. I loved how mm -hmm. she could bring it up and then turn it off. You know, she's that yeah. 911 operator. She knows how to be yeah. like, it's time to party. I'm okay, it's time to be serious. Yep. And a lot of people mm -hmm. don't have that switch. It's always, it's either always time to party or it's always business, right? So the fact that she had that switch, it's like, all right, we're partying now. And then it's okay. It's time to get serious. And when you're a 911 operator, you hear some shit, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you hear some stuff. So she probably knows how to deal with things and, and, and say the right things. But man, that conversation with Santina, just, I don't know, man, the things and with Kuzi walking around the backyard with, with John Michael, like there's just so many things I'm like, what are you doing? You know? So I think I was a little off on Koozie. I, I still like her. I still like her, but I don't think she's going to do as well as I was hoping, you know, kind of thing. But uh, yeah, thoughts on Koozie yeah. pregame to what you've I, seen so far. I agree with you. I I expected Koozie to do very well. Um, I did give her like on a one to five. I gave her like a four just because I was afraid that she could get targeted if she's got this over the top personality and people are in, you know, how people get sometimes. You want it to be game, but a lot of people come in in the early weeks playing very personally because yes. they have no game really to go off of. And one thing I know in the Big Brother house, like um, secrets don't last long. They And so if you find yourself in week one not being able to retain information, that's probably not going to change throughout the season. Because if I've come in the game and I start off telling you something, I can't switch and start not telling you things right. because that's going to become obvious to you. I'm going to get paranoid about it. You're going to notice it. I'm going to wonder if you notice it. It's going to blow my game up. So if you start off, it's better to play like Santina is. I got my walls up. I'm kind of quiet. I'm kind of reserved. You don't know how much I'm willing to talk or not because I didn't start off talking. Exactly. So if I ever do open up to you, you will look at that as we're making some progress. But if you just already already have started off just spilling the beans, don't let something go by and you don't come spill the beans. Why aren't you spilling the beans? You always spill the beans. You spilled the beans since week one. And that's an amazing point. That is actually such a key thing to mention because you're right. Once they know you're that type of person and you stop being that type of person, something's up. Why aren't you telling me I'm anything? Up. You've been telling me things since day one. Why, why all of a sudden what's changed? Do you not trust mm -hmm. me anymore? Do you not like me? Are you targeting me? Like what's going on? And that's a really good point. And like you said, with Santina, it's the opposite. Now she's known as this person that's not opening up. That's normal. That becomes normalized. Yep. So when she does, just like you said, when she does start opening up, it's like, okay, we're, we're, we're getting there now. Something's working, mm -hmm. but it's the opposite for Kuzi. I think that's a very, very good point. And you can't turn that faucet off. Once you open it, it's open. Now the information flows and, and you know, she's a source of information. That's a very, very, very good point. Very important thing to say. Uh, very, very well said and, and uh, 1 million percent true. And, and uh, yeah, you, you like those people. You like the ones that can't turn the faucet off. You know, that's the ones you wouldn't yeah. talk to. You what's going on? What's 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 and, happening this week? And you know? those are the people you don't give information to right. because I was raised that a dog that brings a bone carries a bone. And I'm not referring to any humans as bones. This is just an analogy, no, you're, you're. meaning that if you come give me information unwarranted, unasked, I know that. I should know that if I give you information, you're going to take the information that I've given you back. Just like you brought me something. If I give you something, you're taking that back with you. So Santina's playing it very smart by keeping those things to herself. Because how do I know to trust that everything that you've learned, you've come and given to me. But right. we don't have any kind of working relationship yet. 
that you're not going to take what I've given you to someone else. So some pe- people who come talking, telling me everything, I do just like Santina. I put that right in my pocket and I go, thank you. And this is only week one. This is only week one. This should be the easiest week to just maintain this stuff, you know? So yeah. very interesting. Now, if you're Santina, who would you nominate? Now, I know you haven't watched the Daily, so who would you nominate if, if you were in her shoes? So, so like, okay, yeah, let's hear it. It's So I kind of do know a little bit of okay. something because I was all in your business on your kick in your daily. So <laughs> I love it. I, I kind of know that uh, Zach and Santina are kind of close. Right. Yeah. And he's let he knows that JM wants the guys gone. And so I believe he's pushing for JM to go on the block. But I know that Santina and JM were close in the beginning because they teamed up as HOH uh, for their for their first HOH. And they're both like they share like a certain a similar background. So I'm not sure how she feels about targeting him. I don't know that yet. Um, I probably... If I'm sentient, I'd probably let him stay and have somebody around who will target the guys for me. I prefer to not get my hands dirty. (laughs) So if I know that I've got somebody who wants to get their hands dirty, then you stay here and he will always be a target. He'll always be a target for the guys. So they're going to always want him gone. Zach, you're not going to use me to do your dirty work, but I am going to use JM and everyone else to do mine. So I would not put JM on the block. I'd let everyone else. He's he, if he becomes house target, that's easy for me. Um, but in week one, it is kind of easy to go with a house target because then you don't ruffle any, any feathers. You don't really have to show your cards. Uh, I know someone is going to go on the block, and that's Renee, you said, right? Renee, so she lo- Okay, so so what happened with Renee, uh, they do, it's, a do, it's a new thing this year. There's a new twist. So normally it's just the two nominees, but if you come last place in the, in the comp, you're automatically nominated. Oh, wait, so there are three nominees? Three noms this year. This is the first year they're ever oh. doing that. So Renee, so you know how they had the HOH comp, right? So yeah. uh, Santina won. So it was Santina yeah. versus um, JM, and then it was mm-hmm. Renee versus Shania. Mm-hmm. So whoever won and Shania, between, and Shania won. Yeah. It. So that means mm-hmm. Renee is automatically nominated. I'll see. I just thought she was the second nom and then the HOH had to nominate another person. Oh, so, three. okay. So she still has got to not, she still has to nominate two people. So like that itself, the three mm-hmm. noms, you can, you can play, you can game that so much to corner the, like corner the noms and the, and the votes and stuff. There's such a way to play that too. Um, yeah. So here's the thing. So I agree with you and I play, the, I play very similar to that. It's like, someone's got to go, but I need bigger targets in the house. JM has openly said he's going for the guys. Why would I take him out? It doesn't make sense. He's going for the guys. Guess who the guys have to go for? It's him. So I could sit back, fuel the fire, fan it, put some gas on it, let them fight. You're sitting back controlling the votes. One week, these guys win one week, those guys win. And it, and, or maybe the, you know, whatever, whoever's winning, you're the one with the vote. The voters have mm-hmm. the power. That's the way it is. Yeah. So you kind of fan it. I don't think they're going to do that this week. I think the, the, the plan is going to be Dan, uh, Renee, cause she's Dan. automatically. Yeah. Renee and, um, uh, Anika uh-huh. with JM as a backdoor target. Why backdoor somebody, but you're like, you say it's week one and it's hard because if everyone's pushing this narrative and it's week one, it's like, what do you do? Like, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it does matter, but it's like week one, is it really this necessary to, to fall on a sword? You know, it's like, it's too early. Right. So they, I think the boys want JM. I don't even know if it's just the boys, but Kuzi came in and she was talking to uh, Santina saying, Hey, listen, JM just told me all this stuff too. So I don't think Santina trusts her as much mm-hmm. uh tr- sorry trust jm as much either so it's it's yeah. a it's a mess and i think for week one i think it's been a really good uh series so far i think the cast yeah. is phenomenal i'm loving the cast i think there's a lot of people there to play i love the cast too yeah, yeah i think there's a lot of people there to play right now i think it's the zach show uh i don't know if he's gonna be able to keep this momentum i think you know eventually things are gonna he's gonna get figured out but he's a really good talker very good he's talker funny i yeah. love to hear him talk he had me on the floor he said he said this <laughs> Somebody asked him something. It was like Ty or um, one of the other guys. And he's like, oh, no, I got I got a girl at home. But I mean, I, I, yeah. I have to. <laughs> <laughs> I love said, that. It's said, a good answer. It is whatever, yeah. whatever. And I will just have to fix that when I get home. <laughs> yeah. 
That's a problem for later, he said. I listen, I uh I respect it. Like I respect the fact that he's there to game, like he's there to do a job. Yeah. I'm sure if he has a girlfriend at home, they have this call co- this talk where it's like, listen, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna flirt, I'm gonna do whatever, I'm not gonna cross any lines, but we're gonna, you know, I'm gonna be flirting, I'm gonna be laying down, you know. I'm sure they had the talk, but yeah, he killed me. He killed me. He was he was absolutely hilarious. What are your thoughts on the no audience? What are your thoughts on that? No audience. Oh, on that. For the exits? Yeah, no no audience, like no crowd going in, no crowds coming out. Like when I went in, one of the best You know, feelings... we have had that. That's been us. You don't have an audience anymore? No. We, the first audience we got was last season. Oh. When I came out, <laughs> when I came out, it was me, Julie, and the camera crew. I oh, said, how y'all doing? Man, that breaks my heart. You deserve more than that. That breaks my heart. I know. Oh, <laughs> man. Because t- and, and now I'm going to, now it feels like I'm rubbing this in. And I, I hate to say it. Well, that's one Go of the ahead, best. Go ahead, Bruno. So when you came out. Oh, you know, I don't even want to say the story there. anymore. I don't even want to say the story. You know what? Never. It sucked. You know what? When I came out, it sucked. You know, hearing the crowds, it was bad anyway. Oh, man. But I will say I'm surprised that they're not because we first brought crowds back. BB24 US had a small crowd there. Um, and so that was pretty dope to see a crowd there. When they brought us back, my alliance, the cookout back um, right before finale, there was a small audience there. So I'm surprised that Canada isn't like making a way to bring so- small audiences, even right. if they can't bring like um every all of the people back that they'd like to i agree That's interesting. even if it's just production yeah, it's kind of sad like it even honestly... even if they just fill the audience with production members people that are already yeah. in the studio you know there's a lot of handlers and and stage you know there's a lot of people around there's... they could do that that yeah. has been covid approved yeah right it's kind of it is kind of uh because you walk out and it's just like it's quiet. It's dead silent. It's it's for us. It's like Julie saying, OK, hi. And then she did me like this. She said, I air hug. I said, OK, oh. over it. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, man. I, I was going to go on about it, but I, I don't you know what? Bruno, I, just tell your story. Tell it to me. I haven't heard uh, it, Bruno. Tell all me right. So what happened. I almost feel OK. So that's one of the moments I will never forget. Is the crowd, is the roar going in, the roar coming out. Obviously, you don't want to hear them coming out. You want to hear them you know, when you win. But uh, that's that's the moment I'll never forget, man. The Just the lights and the screaming and the cheering and the standing ovations. It was just, it's something that's burned in my brain and I will remember forever. So I feel for the audience. And I, I agree with you. I think they should bring some people back. If it's even a small group, something, man. Like, it's because you're in that environment for so long, you're... You don't see any humans. You come out and it's just nice to hear, you know, something. You're 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 at a low. When you're getting evicted, it's a low in your life. Yeah. You know, you don't it's not a good feeling, right? So yeah. it'd be nice to get that little pick me up, you know, as as you're That's you're true. just getting away. So yeah, it's That's a shame. It, it is definitely a shame. Well, well, they don't know any different. That's for sure. But, That's true. You know, that is true. It's not like it's not like one time they walked in and they had an audience. So yeah. they've never walked in. It's I guess that's normal to them. But I just like even Moon walking in saying. and they're just like you know like whoever Zach or Claudia and they're just like hi and you can like hear them like hi like it's that was weird to me because normally the crowd's going bananas you know and it's just uh, it is what it is. So um, is there anything that uh, you want to bring? Is there anything we, that you want to bring up that we did not uh, mention at all today? So tell me, fill me in on the dailies if you if you want, if this absolutely. is where you do it, because oh, I don't like the last thing I saw was JM and Koozie spinning circles around. The, uh, oh, and, man. and I was like, oh, my y'all are making me dizzy. And at least I'm like, it's a workout equipment right there. The least you guys could do is sit down and act like you're working. Right. Out, and that's why you're having conversation. But everyone knows that you're just talking. And that's the last thing you need. Yeah, and it just it brings attention. They see you doing these laps. They know you're you're talking. They could tell you what you're talking about, just the way your body language and what you're talking about and everything. It's 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 too suspicious. People are going in and out of the backyard, and it's like, what are you guys and talking James about? He's gonna be in trouble. He talks too much. He's even yeah. in the store. He's like, I don't care. I'll do this. I don't care. I was like, you gotta care, honey. Yeah. You have yeah. to care about something. You have to. You ha- you can't go in and just have this I don't care mentality. You can't, you or else you're gonna get caught. It. Uh, yeah. Speaking of speaking of that, actually, uh, Daniel, Daniel, we haven't talked about Daniel. Yeah. He he okay. was a fan favorite going in. I think a lot of people were mm-hmm. were cheering for him and stuff. I don't know if this is good gameplay or or maybe he's just I don't know. I, I just he's non-existent. To me, he's I, non-existent. I was gonna say I haven't noticed him. Yeah, yeah. non-existent. Not in the episodes. He's barely on the dailies. Like, which isn't a bad thing. You know, it isn't a bad thing. If you're not on the episode, that means you're not in danger. Laying low. Yeah, but. He so, came in with this attitude, I'm going to do everything when I go in. I didn't play, uh, apply 11 years just to sit on the couch. And that's what he's doing. So let's hear uh, your thoughts. 
Uh, again, a lot of people have this perception of themselves, of who we are. And I think that was one of my one of my desires in applying. I was like, I really need to know if I am who I think I am. <laughs> and I am. No, so I'm just kidding. So anyway. You killed it. You did. I'm, I'm going to say it right. You killed it. Legend, legend, <laughs> legend. I'll say it. Thank you. But I know when, when, when I walked into the house, everything in my head before I got there was, I'm going to be this, I'm going to be that, I know I'm blah, blah, blah. Then I walk in and it's 15 other people and you've got Aza who's like radiating and gorgeous and just stunning. And then you got all of these beautiful people. It was so many beautiful people on my season. And then so many smart people. I'm listening to Claire. I'm listening to Derek. I'm listening to Travis. I'm listening to all these smart people. I've got Hannah who was playing like she was a fashion student. I'm like, girl, you <laughs> are not, don't do fashion anyway. Even if you like fashion, study yeah. something else and then fashion later. So I, what I'm saying is you, you think that I'm here amongst our friends and our peers that we've gone to school with or that we've grown up with. Yeah, we might be the brightest star in that room, right? But when you go into these situation these environments where these people have been cast for also being the brightest and biggest stars you realize you start questioning yourself like am i really that bitch (laughs) (laughs) yeah i again i think we have a very similar mindset because i say the exact same thing it's like you think on the outside when you're at home you think you're gonna go in as this player and this person but once you're face to face you realize wait a minute it's not going to be this easy. It do, it's not going to work that way, you know? And it's You call yourself a super fan. You find out somebody else not only is a super fan, but they mm. took notes. They've watched this. They've watched podcasts. I didn't even know they had podcasts. I was like, <laughs> oh, they got podcasts? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's. I'm telling you, it's wild. So speaking of podcasts, you have one, and I'm going to put the link below. Uh, tell us about your podcast. So I have a podcast that I'm doing. I'm a host with um, Hannah Chada and Derek Frazier, Big D. It's called The Royal Tea. Um, We have put together a network called Heavy Crown Network, and this network is to allow other podcasters the opportunity to come and showcase their show on a network who is already performing. And so like just to grow a bigger network. So, you know, for over here in the U.S., like just like or like Netflix. So we want Heavy Crown to be the next Netflix of podcasting where people come and put their shows on Heavy Crown. And then it's like you might just turn on the Heavy Crown Network and let it play all day long because you've got my show you've got the bruno show you've got whoever's show you've got all these shows on there um and so i've noticed a lot of people going into the house and saying on the live feeds when i get out i want to start a podcast and i remember i had no idea how to start a podcast but um i was i was just thinking about the future people who may want a podcast and then some people who have a podcast but may not be doing well or have a lot of subscribers what if we all join together and have like a ton of subscribers we could get you know we could become whoever we want so um it's called the heavy crown network is on youtube that's the channel at heavy crown and our specific show for me, Chata, and Big D is called Royal Tea. And Royal Tea brings you all the tea. I love so it. So we're bringing headline tea. We're bringing reality TV tea. We're just spilling tea all over the place. So get your mugs. I love it. I love it. And we'll definitely be putting the link below so everyone can check it out as well. Tiff, you are absolutely incredible. I, I, I love you. And I know, like we said earlier, we met at, at the BB Can 10 finale. And we just hit it off right away. Um, I don't know. You just have that magnetism to you. And that's what makes it's that X factor. You know, that's what makes these like players, great players is you have that, you have that X factor, you have that magnetism, you have that swag, you have that, like, it's like, yeah, I want to go talk to her. And, and, and I love that. So huge shout out. And thank you so much. I mean, I, I loved this. I love this. Thank you for having me. I, I never knew though, even though we hit it off when we met, I never knew we were so similar in our mindset and our observation of the game and our strategizing. So um, I don't know if that's a good thing if we ever play a game together. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, man. I just I'm I, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just minding my business. I I don't know. Man. I don't He's know. downplaying his threat level. <laughs> you are you are amazing. I know. Listen, I would I'll say with my full chest, we will see you again. Like a, a period. I will say my full. And you got a fan right here. We're gonna be cheering for you and the whole community behind. We got you. We got you a hundred. So yeah, you. I'm in your corner thank a million. You. Um, thank you so much for being here. If you ever want to come thank back, you. if you ever need me, just please say the word and I Anytime. got you a hundred. Yeah. Anytime. All right. Alrighty.
Thank you so much. Great chatting with you. Take care. Make sure you follow her. Guys, if you're watching this video still on the YouTube channel, uh, make sure you follow all her socials. I'll put them all below. And thank you for watching, guys. Thanks, We're out of here. Canada. And I'll see you next week. Later, later, later. Okay.